Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to Power Tips. Welcome to Power Tip 49. In this Power Tip, we're going to discuss ceramic capacitors and some of the pitfalls that you need to watch out when you're using them. You're going to use the ceramic capacitors because they're small, they have low ESR, they're low cost, they're highly reliable, they have long life, and then they're capable of high ripple currents. The high capacitance is enabled by high permittivity dielectric materials. And what you'll find with the high permittivity materials is there's a wide range of capacitance that you'll have to work with. These capacitors are classified by three characters. The first character sets the minimum temperature operation of the capacitor. The second character sets the maximum operating temperature. And then the third character gives you a feeling of the capacitance change over these operating frequencies. For instance, I've picked a typical dielectric of Z5U. The Z means that the minimum temperature operation of the capacitor is plus 10 degrees C. Five indicates that the maximum temperature operation of the capacitor is plus 85 degrees C. And then finally, the U represents the change in capacitance over temperature. In this particular case, our capacitance may go up as much as 22% at high temperatures, or it may go down as much as 56%. So you have to be very mindful of the shift in the capacitance. The second thing that happens with these capacitors is the capacitance is also a function of the bias voltage on the capacitor. Here I plotted a typical X5S capacitor capacitance change versus applied voltage. And you'll see at even voltages of as little as 2 or 3 volts, we get a shift in capacitance. And for instance, this particular capacitor is rated for 6 0.3 volt operation, and when we get the full voltage on the capacitor, we've lost over 50% of the capacitance. And this can have significant impact on the ripple performance of the power supply and the control loop bandwidth also. Another thing to watch out in these ceramic capacitors is their very low ESR. And while that's very good for filter applications and high ripple currents, it also can create some problems for you and your power supply design. One of the problems it may create is your capacitance may oscillate with the input lines and that can cause a high source impedance on the power supply and can lead to oscillating power systems. You now for more information on this particular problem take a look at power tip 3. The second issue that this high Q of these capacitors can cause is you may cause an overvoltage condition in the power supply when you first the power power. So if you have a source such as this source over here on the left of this diagram and you abruptly apply this inductance to the source, you can create a surge on the output capacitor. And since this is very high Q, that surge can go to twice the input voltage. And that can cause overvoltage conditions in your system and can result in damaged equipment. Another thing that you need to watch out for in these ceramic capacitors is their piezoelectric. And what that means is the dimensions of the capacitor change as you apply voltage to it. And that can result in audible noise in your output capacitors. So what can you do about these piezoelectric problems? Well, a few things. You can change to low permittivity ceramic material like COG. Uh, for instance, these X7S capacitors, X5R capacitors have dielectrics on the order of 2000. In the COGs, you're only working with a, a dielectric constant of a couple hundred. Another thing that you can do is that you can change from the ceramic capacitor to a different dielectric such as a film. You can isolate the capacitor from the circuit board. You can use leaded components so that the capacitor is not so tightly coupled into the printed wiring board and eliminate some amplification effects from the printed wiring board. Another thing that you can do is you can use a smaller footprint device and that'll reduce the stress coupled into the circuit board. And finally, you might use a thicker part 
and that thicker part will reduce the applied voltage stress to the dielectric and reduce some of the piezoelectric effects. Finally, cracking is a big problem with the ceramic capacitors. And what you're going to find with the ceramic capacitors is that you want to keep the size of the part to a reasonable value. For instance, many manufacturers restrict the size of the ceramic capacitors that they use on circuit boards to 12 tens. Also, you need to be mindful of where on the circuit board that you're putting these capacitors. If you mount them in a long direction of, of the board, they're a lot more prone to flexing than they would be if they were in the short direction. You also have to watch out for corners because those are high flexing points in the circuit board. And then finally, you have to be mindful of potential board flexing during all assembly steps, not just the final assembly. So ceramic capacitors are very popular in industry right now. You can get high capacitances. You can get, reduce the cost of your system. Uh, you can improve the reliability and lengthen the life of the system. The capacitors offer opportunities for reduced size and increased ripple current in, in the capacitors. However, you have to be mindful of certain problems. You have to be mindful of a wide capacitance tolerance over temperature and voltage. You have to realize that these capacitors have very low ESR, resulting in, in high Q circuits on your boards. Uh, these capacitors will make noise if you pulse the currents into them. And then finally, you have to be mindful of mounting the capacitors properly or you'll have problems with cracking. So that's it for this power tip. For more power tips, visit Power Management Design Line and search power tips or click on the link to all articles in the description section of this video. Thank you.